Negotiation is a very, very delicate art. Sometimes you have to be tough. Sometimes you have to be as sweet as pie. You never know. It depends on who you're dealing with. I've always said that negotiation is not really learned. It's almost innate. It's in the genes. A negotiator is born. Okay. So today we're going to be discussing more than anything else negotiation something that I'm very familiar with. I built an empire on negotiation. You see the little airplanes? All over the place. People pay 40 and 50 million dollars for one plane. But out in the Nevada desert, hundreds of commercial airplanes sit unused. The airline business stinks. You can negotiate for one of those planes that seats 350 people for much less than 50 million dollars. That's how I got my plane over here. Now, you're gonna have a pretty tough chore. Each team will be given a list of items to negotiate for the lowest possible price. The winning team is the one that negotiates the most savings off the total retail price of those items. As always, my advisors, Carolyn and George, will be dropping in on you throughout the day to monitor your progress. Okay, it's 8.30 now. I'm off to Chicago. I'll see you guys back at the boardroom at five o'clock. So you've got eight hours to complete this task, and don't be late. I hate people to be late. You come back, and you do a bad job, and I'm not going to be very happy. So good luck. I think the men may have an advantage over the women to negotiate the price for squids. If I can keep the ladies on time, then we'll be doing great. Would you sell us five pounds of dirty, yucky, bloody calamari for $10? Christy! Yes. Hello, folks. Good evening, Hello. Mr. Trump. So, George, what happened? For this task, each team had a list of 10 items to negotiate for the lowest possible price. The total retail price of all of the 10 items came to $1,379.33. At the end of the day, the women negotiated a savings of about 22% off the total retail price. All right, that's 22%. Carolyn? Okay, again, they had a total retail value of 1379.33. The men did well, but were only able to negotiate a total savings of about 9%. So I'm sort of getting used to this, so that means the men lost, the women won. Eighteen candidates met me at the Republic Airport in New York for a 15-week job interview. I chose Ali, a Harvard Business School graduate, and Tarek, a member of Mensa, to pick their own team. I'm going to go ahead and pick you. I'll take Dan. I'd like to pick you. I'll take the beautiful girl in the brown. And the gentleman on the left here. Ali's team named themselves Synergy Corporation. All right. That's a great Synergy, idea. yeah. And Tarek's team chose Gold Rush. Perfect. Good job. We got a name. We're Team Gold Rush. Our first task is selling Sands Club Plus memberships using the Goodyear blimp as an advertising tool. So where's the gift bag? Our gift yeah. bag is... There you go. Oh, the gift bag is physically a bag. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought a gift bag was... A it's a double bag. We don't have that big idea, that, that huge thing. We're telling everyone it's a huge day at Sam's Club, but what is the huge thing? Can we maybe rent, like, a karaoke machine and put it outside or something? Yeah. The stay-at-home moms are not here to karaoke and definitely not business owners. Yeah. Brent has some professional idiosyncrasies, but I appreciate his energy. You know, he's full of it, full, full of energy, that is. Gold Rush sold 40 new memberships. All right, George, how did Synergy do? They sold 43 new Sam Club memberships. Yes! <laughs> Lee, let me ask you a question. You've seen this whole deal. What did you think of him as a leader? I think it was a severe lack of mismanagement. We had no creative process whatsoever. Tarek, let me ask you a question. What was in the gift bags? 
There was nothing in the gift bag. Good. So you gave a gift bag with <laughs> nothing <laughs> in it. Without gifts. That's right. Nothing, that's <laughs> going to be a big hit with all with customers. You know, Tarek, these people are laughing at you. I mean, it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To laugh you know what? I, I, let me let me just say something really quick. Why should you interrupt me when I'm knocking? Because the hell out because of him? He, he, we know, but we by didn't... interrupting me when I'm knocking him, what are you doing to yourself? He, How stupid say, is that, right? It's so not stupid. stupid. Here I am. I'm getting ready practically to fire this guy, and you keep interrupting me and stopping me from doing it. You know what, Summer? You're fired. Okay. Go. Thank you. You didn't make it by much. I want to tell you that, Tarek. She saved your ass. You. I can't even tell you. Seriously. You had no idea. I was this close to getting fired. Summer's mistake was my game. She saved me from being fired, and uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. That was wow. brutal. Yeah, congratulations. I'm not going to make any excuses. I'm not going to tell Mr. Trump that you know he was wrong for for calling me out, because you know the reality is, you know second place is first in a long line of losers, right?